What's going on, guys? Meteorologist Jonathan Kegis with you as we are pinpointing the tropics. Of course, they are still active as expected as this time of the year as we are rolling through the peak of hurricane season. Two waves being monitored now. One really catching our eye. It's that southern one. We've been talking about this one since last week. I'm going to show you some models coming up later on in the video and show you why we need to pay close attention to this. Uh, a little more optimistic, cautiously but nonetheless, uh, we're going to go over what uh, can cause this thing to interact with land coming up. We're going to take a look at some of the models again, and then the steering currents associated with this, this one system and really two systems. You see another juicy way of getting ready to roll off of Africa as we speak. The red one is what we're concerned with here. This one likely going to become a tropical depression in the next couple of days at the very earliest. Again, we'll see this one likely develop quick and then we'll see this one come off the Cabo Verde Islands, give or take, and then that one likely going to stay out to sea. So we're not going to spend a ton of time on that one. I want to get you to the latest computer models. This is officially designated Invest 95L. Once the Hurricane Center tags it as Invest, an area of investigation, that's when the hurricane models start to be run and we start to get the individual spaghetti plots as you see right here now this is why there's cautious optimism and again if you find this video helpful please give it a thumbs up please hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on all things tropics as we venture through the peak of hurricane season tightly packed here although we don't have a well-defined center just yet so these are some of the cautions that we're going to make through the course of this video so a long way to watch and we don't have a well-defined system just yet so if the models don't know where exactly the storm is it doesn't know where it's going to end up so just keep that in mind but the good news is at least right now staying north of the caribbean northeast of the caribbean is the consensus now one of the models that did very very well with our last hurricane idalia the H wharf, the hurricane model here, that's that pink line at the bottom. It is the southernmost line hurricane model of the bunt. So we're going to watch that closely. I'm going to show you some of the European ensembles in just one second. It's the best thing to look at in this stage of the game. Operational Euro. Everybody loves the Euro. We are going to look at it here. It did very, very well in its defense with forecasting where Idalia was going to go, again, to the Panhandle slash Big Bend area of Florida. Here is our disturbance. That's 95L. By this time, by September 6th, we're likely going to be dealing with at least a tropical depression. The Euro still wants to keep it close to the island. So again, if you're watching from the Caribbean, if you're watching from the Southeast U.S., the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, this is something certainly we need to watch because this is way out in the future. So this is going to be September 8th and 9th. So still about five or six days away that we could be dealing with some kind of interaction with the Northeast Caribbean islands. As we take this further into the future, you see what happens here. Here's September 12th. It feels a little tug. It's going this way, and then all of a sudden, it tugs back into the central Atlantic. Going out as far as the model goes here, this is going to be 10 days out, September 14th. There it is, still chilling there. We're going to go over some of the steering mechanisms in just one second, but the fact that it's still hanging out there on September 14th, that's one of the reasons why it needs to be watched. It's kind of a no man's land. It could be pushed and bullied in any direction on whatever steering current comes our way. Mind you, the steering current, this little dip in the jet stream right here, isn't even on the United States mainland yet. That is 10 days away, and it's not being sampled adequately by our upper air balloon network. So just things to keep in mind here as we go deeper into the future. Now, I want to show you the GFS rendition. This one did not do well with Idalia. As we move forward here, it's been having issues all season long. It had a better year last year, but nonetheless, there we go with our disturbance. As we take this further into the future, this is September 7th, and it's still having it pretty low. So this is the fresh run here. It has it still at a pretty low uh, launching point. It does take it northeast of the Caribbean islands, but it's a little closer than the European Similar, though, by the time we get to the 12th with having potentially a very strong hurricane just north of the Turks and Caicos. But this one does have it interacting with the United States. Maybe not in southeast. Maybe by the time it gets to the mid-Atlantic and into the northeast. So some things that we have to watch. I want to show you first before we get into some of the ensembles here, what is actually steering this thing? Because I think it'll put into perspective what the ensembles mean here. And I think that's important at this stage in the game. I'll explain what ensembles are in just one second. But nonetheless, big chunk of high pressure. Our Bermuda High is hanging out right here. This is fast forwarding to Saturday. So here we go with 
our area of low pressure, that little color change there, that little dot in the thing, that is the difference in uh, the sea level pressure there. So as we take this further in time, our area of high pressure kind of just bounces around. Here is our storm. It's becoming well-defined. That's why the colors are changing. We're seeing lower heights. That means we have a lower pressure system there. We have a stronger system. What we are going to be watching for towards this period to help steer it out is this dip in the jet stream. And this is the one thing that I caution that we don't know much about it. It is not on the United States landmass yet, so we don't have it sampled by our balloon network. And we don't have a low-level sensor yet with our storm, so we don't know what's exactly going on with this storm. We don't know what's actually going to be steering it. We have an idea, of course, but we don't know the sampling until we can actually get our instruments up in these features, which, again, are 7 to 10 days away. So there's a lot of room. It's that butterfly effect, a subtle change somewhere in the Pacific Northwest with this stream, this upper-level upper feature here. That changes. That can change the whole thing. So... That's why it's important to, even though there's some cautious optimism with the models wanting to curve this, to not completely let your guard down if you're watching from the Northeast Caribbean or the Turks and Caicos or the Bahamas, Florida or the Southeast Corner or Northeast United States, really all up and down the Eastern Seaboard again. It's one of those things to watch because the steering currents are not well defined and they are so far into the future what will be interacting with that. So just wanted to show you that that is what is going to be steering this. I will say here, though, again, on a positive note, this is a look at the European ensembles. Now, we always talk about the ensembles if you frequent this channel. It's the European. There's 51 members that make up the European ensemble. But like a band, there are different members here. There's different initial conditions added into these models. And it's the best thing to look at at this stage in the game. And we don't have a well-defined center. And we have a more uncertain future when it comes to the steering currents. The good thing about this is is that most if not all of these european ensembles do keep this entity that will likely become a tropical depression and likely a strong hurricane northeast of the caribbean it some of these do get it into the turks and caicos into the bahamas and then we have a couple of outliers as you see the cross here is here here getting close to the southeast corner of the united states i want to point out one other thing as i kind of bounce around here Note the pink lines here. That is a really, really strong storm. So all of the European ensembles, most if not all, get this thing really strong. I mean, over 100 knots. So we have a very powerful hurricane. That's the one thing that this is agreeing on, is that we are going to have a very strong storm somewhere likely northeast of the Caribbean and then in no man's land out here. The other thing that most do agree on, though, you see that hard turn. The operational run, that single run that I showed you of the European did show that how it comes, 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 and then button hooks out. The reason for that is that dip in the jet stream. We can kind of see that right here. And then you can kind of see how we have the weakening of the Bermuda High. So it, the storm quickly, once it feels a weakness in that steering ridge, it goes up and out. So we want that trough there to weaken the western side of that ridge. That storm, especially if it is stronger, it is going to feel that weakness and want to be tugged to the north. That is the way out of this storm. Also, you notice with the other lines back here, that is likely going to be another at least tropical storm that quickly develops around the Cabo Verde Islands and then goes up and out. So this week, we could end up having uh, two named storms uh, in the Atlantic, the leading one is going to be the one of most concern, although if you're watching maybe from the Azores or even England, uh, the, getting into the United Kingdom, this could be an extra tropical thing by the time it gets there. We will keep an eye on that. Mentioned earlier that, of course, we are venture, venturing through peak season. I want to show you the tropical satellite that is positioned over Africa. You see this big flare-up of thunderstorms. This is crazy. This is the wave that's likely going to develop around the Cabo Verde Islands and be swung out. That is very, very beefy. But then we have another storm right here, another wave, complex of thunderstorms, that is going to eject very low off of Africa. And it's these ones that eject super, super low that really have the most concern even early on. It's just because they're further away from the steering mechanisms that have the ability to fling them up and out. So they're already getting kind of a head start. Now, we may get lucky with that first one. Again, I just caution to not write that one off just yet as we are going to be dealing with... Uh, we're going to be watching that one for the next 7 to 10 days again, and we are going to have 
uh, again, those steering currents need to come into play. All right. The peak of hurricane season is September 10th. We're six days away from that. We are nearing that climatological peak. We normally keep activity rolling. Again, we are in peak season. I know there's one set day that is like the peak, and then we start to come down. We've been in peak season since really the first or second week of August. That's when we typically see that huge ramp up of tropical activity. So you see that rolling through right there. We'll see what happens. You saw the waves there. The Atlantic finally flipped its switch, unfortunately. So we are going to watch that, and that's all we can do at this stage in the game. But we are really watching that first big wave that rolled off of Africa the other day. That's likely going to be a, a tropical depression coming up within the next couple of days. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. If you have want to stay up to date on all things tropical weather, Make sure you hit subscribe. And of course, if you found this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button, and we will catch you next time. If you are watching live on YouTube, post in the comments. Again, we've been coming at you live on ClickOrlando.com, the Pinpoint Hurricane app, the Pinpoint Weather app, and of course, on New 6 Plus and ClickOrlando.com. We're everywhere. Again, we're watching it closely. It's cautious optimism, and I want to be clear about that, that where it looks like the models are going to bend, we've seen this story before, unfortunately, where it looked like it was going out and then came in because it either slowed down more than anticipated or sped up and just kind of missed its way out. There is a lot of open air out here. What a lot of people don't realize is that in order to be able to get good data into our computer models, we need to have the data in the first place. We do have ships, we do have airplanes out there that we can get good data from, but there is a big ocean out here that is just not sampled. So that is one thing that we caution. And then on the other side, that upper low, that little dip in the jet stream, again, it's way out there, three, four, five thousand miles away, probably even more than that, because it's seven days away. It's not even on the United States mainland, so certainly we're not getting our balloons up into it to really sample that the speed, and like I said before, the, it's the butterfly effect. One little change upstream impacts what happens downstream uh, big time. So we have our eyes on it. We are watching it closely. Uh, for Florida's perspective, cautiously optimistic, cautiously. But this one bears watching through at least the weekend and early next week, especially if it does what the Euro wants to do. And again, that is kind of meander around here. We don't want it to stall there and then have a big area of high pressure that would follow that trough that dip in the jet stream, and then push it back towards land. So there's a lot of things that can happen when they, these storms kind of get in no man's land like this. So we are going to be watching that closely. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want more information on here, I have a link on clickorlando.com. If you're watching on the app, if you're watching on YouTube, I will have that link in the comments on YouTube as well. You can click that and you can get more information kind of a picture by picture rather than watching a video if you like that stuff better. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been another edition of Tropics Watch Live. We get together every Monday at 11 or as necessary, and last week there was a lot of as necessaries, unfortunately, as we were tracking uh, a very active stretch in the tropics and, of course, a hurricane landfall. Uh, we're going to be watching this one closely. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, if you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button for me. And join in on the conversation. Hit that thumbs up button. And again, we'll catch you next time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope everybody is having a fantastic Labor Day. Just chilling and taking it easy. We'll catch you soon.